my purpose out there was to see if anything else was alive in the cornfields, and, and I come back to tell you that not much is alive in the cornfields. You know, there, there are some tiny little mushrooms growing in there, and, and, and there are things, uh, there are uh, uh, deer that, that come through. Uh, we, we did run into one late one night, but um, it's, it's hard to even find an insect out there. Everything is miniaturized. They're, they're, the smallest of spiders, the smallest of ants, and not very many of them. You can crawl on your hands and knees for, for 20 minutes before you finally find some other living thing in there. But, you know, sometimes you will see a grasshopper, but the grasshoppers, most insects stay to the outside of the, the cornfield, the edges, because the, the, uh, there's a gene that's in the corn that is a pesticide. So the, the corn is actually a, a poison to the insects. So, so there's this, this race between the grasshoppers and the genetic engineers to, uh, because the grasshoppers are, are adapting. They're, they're getting deeper into the corn and the genetic engineers are pushing them back. And I'm, I'm thinking that this is, um, this is a uh, high-speed evolution going on right here. And the future of the planet is going to be corn and grasshoppers and everything that radiates out from them. And this, is, uh, this isn't a tall grass prairie, but this is what, what's out there. Um, you know, this, is, this, is, this actually used to be a cornfield. This is two years after a cornfield. And it has been replanted and burned and planted and burned. And, and they're trying to get native grasses to grow back in here. And so it was heartening for me to go check out a place like this where, where you could say, okay, two years ago, this was, this was just, this was monoculture. This, this was, you know, death. This was mass extinction, and, and life is coming back to this place. But think that right now, uh, the Iowa, 90% of the land, the surface area of Iowa is under agricultural production. 90% of a landscape turned to corn and soybeans. And, and the, the, the farmers out there, the, the, the farmer that, that I spent time with uh, who, who uh, owns this field, they're just, they're... They're such hospitable, wonderful people, and, and I talked to him about this dilemma. I said, you know what, this is, is this right? <laughs> is this supposed to be this way? And he said, you know, we've we got seven billion people on the planet, and my job is to keep food moving, that, that this is what I do. I'm part of this thing. This is my job. And, and, and I understood what he was saying, that you can't have an agricultural collapse when you're relying on this kind of production, that this that he is keeping people alive, you know, and 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 where does that go? Seven billion to ten billion to fifteen billion to thirty billion. You know, where does where does that end? The reason I say that this is the most terrifying future I can imagine is because this is humans covering everything. This is what I don't want to see. I don't want to see us everywhere. Angus didn't want to see us everywhere either. He was, I think, you know, just.